Now at this point we've got this home screen, save screen, view screen. Um, each of these screens obviously is set up via a section with an accompanying header, article, etc. And we're gonna we're gonna create other sorts of screens as well, and we would have to create their their basic structure to save ourselves some effort now. Well, to set, to set something up now to save ourselves some effort later, what we're going to do is at the very end of the document after save comic, we're going to create a sort of a template section, a section that is pretty empty but it has the basic structure. Therefore, when we need to create new sections, instead of having to write this stuff ourselves, we'll have the template already there. We copy and paste it and change it a little bit. So let's say after our very last screen here, we'll create a new area. This will be template screen start and template screen end. Uh, we'll create a basic uh, skeleton of structure um, for a section, which then we can copy and paste. So in our basic structure, we'll have a section. We'll have a header, an article, and a footer. Uh, depending on the design of our screen, uh, we have those basic three areas of design. Section, header, article, and footer. So we've done this several times today and several times through the class. So uh, we should know what we need to do, the various data roles that we add to these. So first, the section is a data role of page. For ID, I want to put here very obviously template in big capital letters so that we remember to change it once we copy it for its intended purpose later. Um, obviously, if a section is not named properly, when we try to link from screen to screen, it won't work. So maybe naming, naming it very obviously and capitalized like that should be helpful. Header, data role, header. Usually, we'll want the data position fixed. If not, we can remove it. But as a starting point, that's good. Uh, we didn't use footer uh, on save comic, view comic. Uh, but we could if we wanted. So footer needs a data role of footer and a data position of fixed. Data role footer for the footer, and data position fixed to keep it pinned to the bottom. <clears throat> if we're going to use a footer, we often want an H4 down here. And this will be at the bottom of the screen. Uh, so for the header, we'll add an H1. That'll be the top. So we want H1 at the very top of the document. We can call that the top. In the article, we can have h2 and maybe h3. And that's our main content area. An article is the special case that doesn't have a data role. It simply has role, but then it has also a class. Role of main class UI content.
And just some placeholder info, we can put an H2. Let's say main. We saw that when we uh, create different sections, they inherently don't have any of the content or styling from any other element. So if we wanted to create a brand new screen that also had navigation buttons and such, this uh, template wouldn't have them. So we would have to have a, a navigation here as well. And so when uh, this gets copied and pasted to uh, create different screens, we would have a nav bar to go along with it. So the header area, article, footer, all a new section, all a template. We can copy and paste uh, this to start to start quickly, uh, setting up a, a design. List item. We'll do two list items. Page one, page two. Well, in order for these links to behave like links, or these uh, buttons to behave like buttons, uh, we have to have links, link syntax here. Just put the dummy link that goes nowhere, but it behaves like a, a link. And then both of these have the opening and closing A tags. Section, footer, article, header, a little bit of content in each. Nav bar. This is our template file, uh, our template template screen. That is um, the whole point of this. Is obviously uh, we did it somewhat backwards, somewhat on purpose. That we did it uh, manually when we started the day today. We said we have a goal of creating a save comic screen and a view comic screen, and then we wrote it by hand. Well, if we had this first, this would have saved us a little effort. That's okay. I think um, doing it the, the long way or, or the hard way first and then figuring out shortcuts, I think that's a good way to do things. Um, so here's a shortcut for us in the future. If we want to create a brand new screen, we don't have to type section, header, blah, blah, blah anymore. We copy this section, we paste it to a new area of the code, and then we change the little bit that we need to change. This is not a perfect solution because we might create a screen that doesn't require a nav bar. So we have to take the extra effort just to remove that part. But besides that, you have a fully set up uh, screen. If you were to save and run this, you should not see this anywhere. You should not be able to get to this screen anywhere because to get to this screen, it has a unique ID. There's no button anywhere that points to that ID. Um, if it does suddenly appear somewhere, that most likely is a bit of a syntax error. I notice a couple of times, a few people once in a while here and there, you, you, might ask, you might not notice it, but I definitely notice it, that when you're going from screen to screen, for some people I saw that there would be like behind everything, there would be something, right? There's the main top content. And then behind it, like when we're going from screen to screen, sometimes for some people I would see stuff behind everything. That usually happens when you have some content that's outside of a section. Well, that makes sense. You put something outside of a section, and therefore when you go from screen to screen, it shows it behind everything. So if you save and run this, you should not see any of this template stuff anywhere in your design. And if you do, confirm that your tags are closed and spelled properly. This is our template file for future work.
the yes say that again oh that's true uh, very good point did I miss that up here as well hopefully I didn't no okay yeah so we need ULs good this will probably technically work because list items should behave all right but yes we should have the UL list so sorry about that one more thing to fix here good thing it's in a template file um, template screen these two list items should be inside of an unordered list it kinda flew over my head because I saw the nav uh, but yes we should have UL unordered lists unordered list and then the list items inside and this gives me an opportunity to do this cool little trick about tabbing it's not so bad here but obviously I have the UL parent elements and then the li list elements and each of these I would want tabbed over yes but here's a here's a little trick that you can do I, I believed I mentioned it before if you select more than one line and hit tab they'll both tab over or everything that's selected will tab over at once uh, and what's really interesting here is you, you don't actually have to select everything. Watch this. I'm only going to select the last character of that first line and the first character of the last line. Technically, I've only selected these, this, and this, but that's enough for me to select and press tab, and everything tabs over. So a little time saver instead of clicking here and dragging here and dragging here and dragging here and then tab. Just go like this. There's my selection tab. So just selecting a little piece of a line plus another line is enough for it to be selected. I'm selecting halfway through tab. Everything tabs over. Shift tab will tab it backwards. Tab will tab it forward. So for two lines, it's not so bad. You tab each one. But sometimes when you copy and paste a, huge, a big chunk of code, sometimes when you paste it, the alignment gets weird. So that's when it's really useful to select a big chunk of code and then tab it to tab everything at once. And just thinking back, everything regarding tabbing and spacing, that's all optional. That's all for aesthetics. Uh, the, the web browser or the device will process it no problem. Technically, all of these 200 lines of code uh, could be on one long line that goes on and on and on and on off the edge of the screen. That's fine. The computer can understand it and process it. But for us, uh, tabs and spaces is very useful simply for the readability of it and to edit the code. So there's our template page. Template screen. We're going to make the uh, save comic screen work later, most likely starting on the first day of part two. Uh, we'll look at one more main lecture topic today, uh, and then we'll end the lecture, and then we'll talk about what the assessment will be on Thursday. I know I'm hyping it and scaring everyone, but it's not going to be so bad. Don't worry about it. Uh, I'll talk about what you will be graded on and assessed on Thursday, and it'll, it'll be all right. Don't worry. Uh, but uh, we have one more thing to talk about uh, before that. So um, right now, the, the design, the style of our project is very basic. It's black and white and gray, light gray, dark gray. It's very basic. Let's take a moment to see what we would need to do to change the to start to change the the colors and to customize it to our own design. Um, before that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to save a copy of what I've done so far today into the network folder. So the main lecture about that, I will put that into the network folder. And then we'll, then we'll look at adding uh, colors and design. So if anyone needs up to this point before we make this change, we've got the um, we've got the um, the items in the network folder.
So um, to to change the design, the colors of things, it's going to be a style sheet. Right now, our project is made up like this from the from the high level of it. The index HTML includes all of the basic content and structure of things. Then we've got the my JavaScript JS file, which is the custom JavaScript functionality. Then we've got these libraries, jQuery, which are all of the, which is our framework, our basic framework, um, our sort of foundation for other advanced things. And then jQuery, we've got three jQuery files, a CSS file, which has the definitions of all of the colors and the icons and all of that stuff. And then a JS file, which has the custom, custom functionality of what does data role mean? Or what does uh, UI grid mean and all of that? And then map, uh, don't quite worry about that one yet, uh, again. But we've got these basic uh, uh, files here for our structure. And in order to change the basic design, we need to override the built-in style of the CSS file. And we can do it in two ways, so the easy way or the hard way. Raise your hand if you want to do it the hard way. <laughs> OK, great. I don't want to do it the hard way either. The easy way is that jQueryMobile.com gives us a tool for us to easily edit the colors of our project. The hard way is that we would have to write custom CSS code. We would have to set up our classes and our IDs and our selectors and everything in a mycss.css file. That's the hard way. We're going to start with the easy way. We will do a bit of the hard way later. But we're going to start this time with the easy way in that we have something called Theme Roller. Theme Roller. We have this tool from jQuery Mobile for free that will let us start to change the design, the look and feel, the colors and such of our project. And then we incorporate it, we, we integrate it with our project here. So go to your web browser and let's go to jQueryMobile.com. And um, at the top, we have themes. We've also got the button down here, theme roller. So at the top, click themes from the top menu here. Now, theme roller need, seems to behave very weird if you use Internet Explorer. So in this case, don't use it. Uh, and then our version of Safari is old, so don't use that. We have Firefox, Chrome, or Opera, I guess. So theme roller right here, it says, OK, theme roller. Create up to 26 theme swatches lettered from A to Z, each with a unique color scheme, then mix and match. OK, we'll go to get rolling. So what we get here is something called A, B, and C. And we've got add swatch. We get a little preview of the different widgets, the different elements, that we use in jQuery mobile. Here's a radio button, here's a list element, body, header, etc. And then we get colors at the top here. So let's say I wanted a cool red color at the top of my in my header. You can simply drag a color and drop it into the element that you want. So anything that is a header will get that color. We will, of course, be able to see behind the scenes what is this code and how does it work. For the, for the starting point, we will use the easier version. So let's say then I drop a color here and another color here, and I wish I took a design class because it's looking terrible. But that's OK, because you will be able to uh, design this however you want. You will not be graded on how great your color schemes are. You're going to be graded <coughs> on that you can do this. But Take a moment to explore this screen a little bit, and then I'll show you what else to do with it. Because I pick an amazing design, and how do I add it to my project? I'll show you in a moment. Just kind of explore what's here, because we've got things about changing lightness of colors, saturation, something called cooler. Just explore this screen a little bit. What are all these things over here? Just explore the screen for a moment, and then I'll show you how to, how to use it and integrate it into our project.
so when we first loaded this screen, we saw that we had three swatches, A, B, and C, and they all looked plain gray. Well, that's exactly what our project looked like, looks like, um, at the moment when we when we run it, plain gray, black and white, very simple. So the default design was the was the default swatch, the default theme A. There's something called data theme. Data theme equals A, B, or C. Uh, we touched on it very briefly before, but let's do this. Let's go back to our code briefly, and uh, let's look at PG Home. And where your PG Home starts, we have section, data role, ID. I want to add a new attribute, but I always want to keep ID last. So we'll add data theme equals B. Do this quick little change in your code and view it, save it and run it. And you'll see that we activate then an alternative design to our project. Data theme A is the default, boring gray. But then if I add data theme B to my home screen, The, uh, the design changes to a dark design. We had a light design in A and a dark design in B. So we have the ability to uh, set up and access 26 different designs, A through Z, A through Z. So built in is A and B, which is plain old gray, or B, plain old black. Well, I want my cool colors that I'm designing here. Maybe not that one, but these over here. I want to activate data theme C. Well, if I go to my code and say data theme equals C, nothing will happen because the built-in behavior is A or B, and A is light and B is dark. I want to integrate these colors, these designs, into my, into my project. Well, after I pick colors and kind of play with this and even go to the side here and set other attributes, um, up here we've got A and B and C, and I can create another one, D, all the way up to Z in global styles. That There's a font area, corners, and such. So I've got these uh, this little bit of basic design that I can do here. And I've got these color swatches that I can select here. And if you looked at these Adobe Cooler swatches, um, it may pop up here or may not uh, about random designs of, of color combinations and such. Well, this, in order for us to integrate it into our project, we would need to download this custom code and add it to our project. You see at the top, we've got help, share, import, and download. If you look at share first, what you get is a link pointing uh, to this particular scheme, this unique address of my particular design. This design that I'm making has this link. Unfortunately, we can only store this theme URL on the server for 30 days. Then it will be deleted. Download a theme to keep a copy safe that you can import later. So within the next 29 days, you can come back to this screen with that link from your share button and continue to edit your design. But when the 31st day happens, it gets removed from memory on jQueryMobile.com. So the download button is what you want. And the download button also explains here how to add it to your to your project. It says this will generate a zip file, a compressed file, that contains both a compressed for production and uncompressed for editing version of your theme. To use your theme, add it together with the icon CSS file to the head of your page before jQuery mobile structure. 
Now, this the general idea is that we're going to download this code in a moment and add it to our site, our project, yes. But this exact instruction here doesn't apply to us. Because these, is, these exact instructions are saying to use that they've used jQuery mobile structure.css. And our project, if you recall here, is not jQuery mobile structure. It's, it's the regular version. The structure file is like a completely stripped down, super simple version of jQuery mobile. So the order that they're saying for them for us to do it here is we're going to add our custom theme that we're designing and then uh, and then the basic icons and then the structure. So these things do get processed in order. So it's saying our basic colors and themes and then the basic structure. Well, we, we don't have this setup. We have plain old jQuery mobile.min.css. We have a structure already, a basic starting point. So actually for us it's going to be backwards. In our code, we're going to have the starting point of jQuery mobile and then our custom CSS after it. So our custom CSS, we need a name here. We'll say my colors. This is going to create a file called mycolors.zip. And in that zip file, we will see various versions of our CSS file. So we'll download this in a moment, and then we're going to add this CSS file into our folder. Then we're going to add the code that links to that uh, design. So step one, you design your colors. Step two, you click download, and you name this thing. Anything, it can be called anything you want. I'm just calling it my colors. Click download zip. Depending on your web browser, it may pop up to ask you would you like to save it or open it. You want to save it. I used Chrome, so it seemed to automatically save to the desktop. When you open your zip file in the desktop, there's an index file. Ignore that. There's the themes folder inside the themes. There is the basic icon file, which we don't need. There's the images folder, which we already have. We already have the built-in jQuery icons, the jQuery mobile icons. We have my color CSS and my colors min CSS. We want my colors min CSS added to our project. The, the one without min is the one that is readable to us and editable to us and has spaces and alignments and notes and comments and it, it looks nice to edit. And the min one is, is the one we want because that's the one that's been minified. It's been compressed. It's been streamlined so that our project loads up. And even when we're going to customize our project even more, remember this is all the easy way, when we do this the hard way, we, we still don't need to edit these files. We're going to create a separate file with even more minute customization. So what we need to do is move or copy or uncompress the My Colors Min CSS into your project folder. So uh, downloading the zip file, download it anywhere you want, uncompress it. The important thing is to then copy or move your CSS file, min.css, into your project folder. Yes? Do we name it my it's going to ask you what name do you want because when you when you click download there's going to be an empty name at the top here and that's where I called it my colors so I'll we'll call this my colors um, a 
Okay, so I downloaded my um, mycolors.min into the folder where my whole project is. In the index file, I then need to connect to it. I need to link to it. I need to link the index file to the mycolors file. And then I'll have access to data theme A, B, and C. In my case, my A, B, and C are going to be these colors here. But back on the index HTML, if you go to the very top of the document, we have link rel to jQuery mobile. And as I said, our particular case is backwards from what the example said. The example said we're going to need a link over here that points to my colors, and then the, and then the jQuery mobile CSS. Um, ours is a little different, so we're going to have the CS. The, we're going to have the jQuery mobile CSS first, and then we're going to have the link rel style sheet. href to my colors dot min dot css so if you created colors in swatch a b and c after adding this line you can start to test it by going to for example the welcome screen data theme equals C. I designed a color swatch C. If you only played with A, you can set it to A. Technically nothing, because A is the default. But if you designed a B swatch, or a C swatch, or a D swatch, after you link your style sheet, your custom colors, to any section, you can add a different data theme. You probably want the same data theme on all sections. This is the example again. Just because you can do it doesn't mean you should. Later on when we talk about fonts, and when I show you how to add 20 fonts, just because you can add 20 fonts, you shouldn't add 20 fonts. Here, um, one color is good enough for pretty much every screen. That gives good consistency, a good aesthetic quality, good user interface design. For certain screens, like maybe a pop-up, I might change it to data theme B or J or something for a different color, a different design to stand out. But if this worked, if you've got all your ducks in aligned, ducks in a row, and you set it all up properly, I've got brand new colors. If I go to login, it goes back to perhaps other colors, unless I set it or not. I, I put the weird colors as data theme A, so all of these are going to be automatically data theme uh, A. Once I manage to log in, that one I had set it to B. B, I did like a purple and a blue, so it's a different color there. Some of these others still need a little tweaking here. We'll, we'll get to that later. Um, but the idea here is that... The idea is that... Once you design colors at jQuery mobile theme roller, you download it, you get your files, you integrate them here, and then you use them by attaching data themes. The zip file that downloads, you should um, you should save that file. Once you design colors that you like, uh, eventually, the, um, that zip file, you should uh, keep that zip file in your flash drive, uh, because that has copies of, of the compressed version and the uncompressed version. And if you ever need to go back and tweak these colors and decide, uh, I, don't, I don't quite like this purple color here, I want a different color, well, theme roller you have a way to import, to re-import your colors. Because once you leave this screen, or even refresh, it all resets back to the normal colors. 
well, oops, I forgot to save my share link. And I deleted my zip file. It's gone. If you didn't save your zip file, all of your designs are going to be gone. If you saved your zip file, you can do import. And it says here, copy and paste the contents of any uncompressed jQuery mobile theme file to upload it. My zip file has the compressed, the min version, and the uncompressed version. jQuery Mobile wants you to copy and paste back the uncompressed version. So even though I said we're going to add the minified compressed version to your project, if you ever need to get it back to Theme Roller to make changes, you need to send back the uncompressed version. So that's how you want to save this zip file. And then you, you import it back in, and you, you can make further changes. We're going to still cover more about changing more colors, customizing it more, changing fonts and such. Uh, we'll cover how to change these fonts and make them nicer, and more alignments and colors and all that good stuff. But as a starting point, I wanted to show that with jQuery Mobile's Theme Roller, you can get started with these new color designs. The trick, of course, is downloading it and integrating it into your project. And you use these data themes to apply uh, into the project. This is one of the things that you will be required to, uh, to do in the assessment. Um, I'm going to talk about the assessment in a moment. Questions on, on, on this theme roller thing? Yeah. I didn't import it. I want to screen it. How do I get it on the register? I drag a file into the import thing. It's, it's going to want to copy and paste. So the way I would do it is, let's see, if you uncompress your zip file, you're going to have a copy of the of this yeah. full version. Then you do a right click edit with Notepad. You oh. need to actually see the code, then okay. then copy all of the code of the uncompressed. And here it's down to 747 lines just of, of those colors. So once you take all of that, copy that, and then go back to Theme Roller, then you paste that. So it'd be nice if you can just drag the file in, yeah. but maybe in the next version. So you have to copy and paste the uncompressed code back into theme roller and then it'll come back with my colors. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll do lab time in just a moment. Um, but um, the, the thing that we did earlier today about setting up the various screens, I put that into the network folder. At the moment I will not put into the network folder this last version where I put my custom colors. Uh, you'll have to uh, practice to do that yourself, or, or look at your neighbors, or re-watch the video. But you'll need to uh, show that you can add these custom colors to your project on your own. And you're going to need, you're going to be tasked with like four or maybe five other things related to what we've already been doing these past few weeks. So, on Thursday at the start of the class, you're going to be given a prompt to accomplish like five things on your project things that we've already done and like one step outside the box of what we've already done. You'll have the time that you need on Thursday to accomplish that and then you'll submit it in person here to show me that you know how to do this and I'll check you off on the on the um, roster and such that you were able to do it from a grade of 1 to 10. So just a simple, uh, you did it all perfectly as required, 10 points, A+. plus. You did it very, very close, very good, 9 points, A. You did it pretty well, 8 points, B, and the usual. You didn't do it very, very well, 4 points, 40%, F. So uh, normal 100-point scale, 1 through you know, one through 10, 0 to 100. Uh, and you'll be required to uh, just uh, take your time and show me in person uh, on Thursday. So we're going to end the main lecture at this point, where we'll have a little lab time. But any questions on the things we talked about today?
No, not, not import. You're going to be required to uh, download your project to then add it to your to your CBDB. So uh, you're, uh, I don't want to see the, the plain gray anymore. You're going to use theme roller on Thursday to make your own colors, plus a few more things that I will reveal on Thursday. <clears throat> Keeping those cards close. Very close right here. Yeah. Okay. Any other general questions?